These are display entities. They're a really cool decorative thing in Minecraft that has a few different uses. There's um, like you can have it as a facade for redstone that you can still walk through, pretty functional. Um, you can even make like a little mini display like this thing. Um, but the problem is that normal players don't have access to it because it requires these command blocks. So we're gonna do something about that today. So that means a data pack, which will be in the description should I succeed. But uh, for this to be like a good data pack, we're going to want to have like an intuitive way to trigger the system. So I was thinking maybe tools. So maybe like we break a block with a tool or like we shoot an arrow through it or I don't know, chop it with, uh, well actually we could use a pickaxe. Pickaxe might be a good solution. Um, but we would like break a block and then the block display would get placed wherever we just broke with like the special tool. Do I even have a pickaxe? Mm, there's a random pickaxe in here. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so probably we would name it something. Ideally something that should be easy to spell because we don't want people spending like a lot of time being like, oh, how do you spell block displayinator or, <laughs> you know, I don't, you know whatever, whatever the name would be. So for now, we'll just call it hologram. And then we need to track when this tool specifically breaks things. And that is probably where this is going to start getting tricky. So first we got to test if this pickaxe can even trigger anything. Um, so I set up a test in the data pack that we're making here. And we're just going to try and break something and see if anything happens. It's very possible that nothing might happen, but let's give it a try. Hmm. Hang on a second. Okay, so there was a typo of a golden pickaxe, or a gold pickaxe instead of a golden pickaxe, because I was trying to make sure it would work for all types of pickaxes. So now I think it should trigger when we go down by one durability, which uh, there it is, haha. <laughs> yeah, it took a few tries because we have unbreaking three. So that worked, but the, the whole unbreaking three thing is going to be an issue because it's not going to trigger every time we break a block and we want it to. Like we want that block to have turned into a block display and it didn't, and it only said something once instead of three times. I do have an idea, but we'll see if it works or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to pretend like I'm crafting this thing because we we need to get rid of the unbreaking three. We need to like strip it from the item. This might be a bad idea, but we'll give it a shot. So I changed a, a thing here and hopefully we should trigger that saying in chat if we pick up the item. <gasps> oh, oh, ho, 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 ho. and you know, we should probably just double check. Oh, what in the? Wait, why is that triggering more? <laughs> I was going to pull out a fortune pick to to see if um if it triggers again. It doesn't trigger. Wait, so then does it do that like in an ender chest? Yep. What about anvil? Yep. Uh, what about a enchanted <laughs> what? <laughs> Excuse me? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, this is a bit of a crazy tangent, but people have been wanting to test for opening of GUIs. Like, <gasps> it works with the crafting table. That means the only thing it doesn't work with is just the regular inventory. That's a little crazy. You could... Wow. <laughs> We just discovered something kind of big that has absolutely no relevance for this project. I'm going to have to remember that. That's uh, I wonder if it works with command blocks. No, it doesn't. Oh, man. Well, that's a little overzealous, but uh, I do believe we can actually use the item command, this command right here, to remove unbreaking. <laughs> okay, so here's a half solution. This, this is going to be tricky, I think. Um, so if we want to remove unbreaking, we need to have it be in our main hand. So I believe if we pick this up, yep, unbreaking goes away. But here's where the problem 
um, happens. So if we, let's say we don't have it and we're selected on the sword for whatever reason, my nice, wonderful netherite sword with unbreaking three, if I go and pick up this uh, pickaxe, <laughs> It just deletes it right off the sword. That's that's really bad. So we're going to need a way to uh, have it only target this slot, which I think we can do with macros. But to test, we need to see if it's possible to get the slot number from this command. So this should give us something, anything. Preferably not that. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Tag. Figured it out. It's all inside of the... Tag tag. <laughs> I always forget about it because it's so generically named. Yep. <laughs> okay, so now if we do dot slot, we can get the four. Yes! Haha. -ha. So now all we have to do is we slot that into our macro, which I'll put in the data pack, which we'll just call it, whoops, like slot number or something. And we'll slot that four into the thing. Oh, you know what we should check is let's put this somewhere else. Does it still give us the correct one? 17. To be honest, uh, let me count. 16, 17. Oh, okay. <laughs> I honestly wasn't sure if I could verify that. <laughs> some, some of the numbers are weird. In fact, like these ones, they're like negative 100 or negative 106. Or, it's really weird. This one is normal though. 17. So... It's getting us a dynamic number, so that way we can only modify this slot and not accidentally remove unbreaking from the sword. Oh, hang on a second. You know what we need to check is if, whoopsie, if it works plugged in, because normally the macro would be here, right? It'd be like slot num, and then whatever our modifier is. And then this would get replaced by 17, B potentially? I don't know if that B would go through, but I think ah. that's not good. Replace the slot on Talon with air. That has me just mildly concerned. It may just be taking it from the selected slot. It might be fine. I don't know. I'll, I'll go put that test into the data pack. Okay, so data pack has been reloaded. We're just going to give it unbreaking one again. We're going to put it in a random slot. Or wait, no. We're going to throw it away. And then when we pick it up, hopefully I don't lose unbreaking on my other stuff. <laughs> Ooh, this didn't lose unbreaking. I had nothing lost unbreaking. Hmm. Okay, that's probably because of the B. Uh, I think I can fix that. Give me a sec. <laughs> okay, I wasn't sure if that would work. Turns out that this thing accepts strings, so... And it I can use a negative number to just chop off the end rather than having to count. So it should work no matter how long that number is. Copy this, paste it into the thing, reload. So you remember the whole thing with uh, replacing it with air, which made no sense? I managed to get it to replace it with hologram. And all I did... <laughs> This, I, this is weird. I changed it from inventory to container. Both of them are valid, but apparently it likes container better. So it has unbreaking. Let's just uh, put it somewhere. Wow, no unbreaking. I, I Everything else is fine. Oh, <laughs> I saw four enchantments and I got scared. It, it's only supposed to have four enchantments. Okay, so that's good. We can strip off the enchanting, and that means that means the durability. Oh, I should probably turn off that say command. But now, because it strips off enchanting, it's going to trigger boom, durability reduced. Durability reduced. <laughs> what? Durability reduced. Why is it triggering triggering the inventory thing? Oh well. <laughs> uh, I'll figure that out. Point is, it's triggering every single time, which is good. That's what we want. So that means we can finally do something with actual block displays. So I think the way we're going to track this is when that message pops up, we're going to target the youngest item. So you see that um, that item, it actually has an age. I assume it's just called age. Yeah, so it says 290. It looks like seconds, but that stands for short. 
So if we just look for the youngest one after this thing has been triggered, then probably the item will be sort of like suspended in midair. Whoops. Like right on top of the block. And so then we can just place the block display there and then delete the item. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So for this to work, we need to check what a young item is. Um, Cause I don't know if it's counting down or counting up, it will change. Oops, I need to, I need to do this like immediately. 11, so it probably starts at zero then. Cause if we do it now, it's bigger, okay. Sometimes like uh, baby zombies, they actually start from a negative number and work up to zero. So that is why that happens. The other thing we need to test is the radius that we should be looking in because if we do, let's say there's another player near us who's also breaking blocks and there's something there, we would want it to detect the one that's closer to us and is within our block breaking radius. So I don't remember exactly how many blocks you need. Three, four, five. So five is the limit. So if we just test for items in a range of five that are lower than this age, we could probably test for like 1s or 0s, then hopefully that will give us the right item. Oh, now this is kind of interesting. So it's supposed to find the item and it's going to say in chat if it finds it, but it's actually too fast. Notice how there's no item there. Whereas um, if there's one spawned, now it finds the old item. So basically it's triggering before the item has been summoned by the game to be dropped by the block. That's actually crazy. I did not see that coming. <laughs> okay, this should be the moment of truth. If I've done everything correctly, I should be able to break a block and have, I mean, I did, oh, I did try something. So there's a chance that it might not work, but it should make a block display. <gasps> Wait a second, 36. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a block display right there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, that's so cool. Wait, how do you get rid of them now? Oh. Oh. You know, I didn't really think about that. <laughs> I was like, well, you know, people just want block displays everywhere, right? Oh, <gasps> it's beautiful. Oh, now that's interesting. The whether or not it's enchanted with silk touch actually affects the result. <laughs> okay, so we got the base model working pretty much. Uh, I do need to delete the items. It's not supposed to drop the items, but I was scared to put slash kill in there. <laughs> I didn't want to just have like random things in my world start dying because I miscoded something. Oh, interesting. You can uh, you can mine through them. Okay, that wow. All right, that's a huge step. So we'll start with removing entities because we're starting to get a few of these. I, I can't tell if this is the real crafting table or this is the real one. <laughs> um, but we have two options. One is to basically just copy the code, the more complex code from my command block thing, and we can sort of use that. It. it won't target the entities properly. It just targets blocks right now. Um, but we could potentially use it to target the entities. Um, the code is more complex and it may not transfer over. We could also do the simplistic solution of basically just shifting nearby. And when we let go, whatever block we're closest to or block entity, display entity, <laughs> whatever it is, could uh, disappear. I'm saying we'll do the easy way as the backup. I'll try and transfer the command block thing over and have it just lock onto entities, specifically block display entities. Well, that was actually way harder than I expected. Uh, wow, that was a lot of work. This better work, that, that's all I'm saying. Okay, so if we hold this in our hand and hold shift. Nothing happens. I just spent like an hour trying to copy this over. Okay. Uh, okay, I think it's this thing, just tag. 
If this test passes, then I think, yeah, okay. Oh my goodness. Good thing it was a tiny mistake. Oh, wait a second. These don't have the new tag. Okay, let me just make sure. Yeah, so these were old. They didn't have the new tag that I'm using to track them to distinguish them from other entities. And it's still not working. <gasps> oh. oh my goodness. Okay, I just had to add some tags to them. It's a little finicky, but you can really clearly see which one you're gonna delete. Wait, is this, did I add the tag to this one? Oh, I didn't add the tag to that one. Yeah, so they're generating with a new tag so that I can track them properly now. So that's why I wasn't finding anything. <laughs> it's a little weird sometimes, but it's okay. Well, remind me never to do that again. <laughs> okay, so now we can actually turn stuff into a hologram and we can delete it. And we don't get the block back, so we're at 27. Break this, still at 27. Gotta wiggle this around. <laughs> this one's way more finicky than the other one. Oh, it's because there's stuff in the way, that's why. It's all this grass that's messing everything up. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, still at 27. All right, so I'm not sure how much more time we're going to have. But one thing that I want to test is what happens when you get an item drop? Because it's probably still creating a block display, and it's just a messed up one. So if we break this flower, oh, the flower doesn't get deleted. That's a good sign. No entity was found. Well, that's promising because basically what we're testing is the uh, the edge case here. So we want, let's look for a full block that drops, ooh, or blocks. Because when it copies over the, the idea of the item dropped, obviously coal is not a block, you know? So we shall see what happens here. Okay, so the item does get deleted. I think I was using this before. And presumably there's now an invisible, yes. Okay, name Minecraft Air. So what we should probably do is uh, every tick, look for the Minecraft Air block displays and just delete them. And I have this special tag here so we can make sure not to delete any other block displays that may be displaying air. I don't know if this one does, but yeah. Should, uh, should keep it nice and clean. <laughs> you can just barely see the line. It has no hitbox, but it does have a view direction. So... <laughs> okay, even better solution. Rather than running it every single second, which is actually kind of expensive, we can just do it when it does the setup. Yeah! Notice how there's no blue line here. We used this fortune thingy, but it didn't uh, delete the item and it didn't create the entity. Well, actually it did, and it just deleted it if it's a, a blank one like this one. So now let's just delete that blank one, and we shouldn't get any more blank ones. So we took care of the edge case, and now this kind of stuff isn't just creating random entities, and the regular stuff still works, but yeah, the rotation is still an issue. So, hmm, I may regret doing this, but uh, <laughs> we might as well see if we can make it rotate. The thing is, I don't want to make like 400 commands, because like these, uh, oh, this doesn't have any. We need something with block properties. Oh, well, actually, the jungle wood has it. So see how it says axis Y? So for every different thing, I would have to make a different command. So axis Y, axis Z, axis uh, north. I wonder how it does that, actually. Well, yeah, this only has three axes, but then some things like a piston. Is there a piston in here? Oh wait, there's dispensers though. That should work. Um, but dispensers, can't even see them because of the crops. <laughs> yeah, see so how it says like facing west. Okay, this is what I was worried about. If there's too many of these different things, then, ugh, I don't, I, like I say, I don't wanna make like a hundred commands <laughs> just to facilitate the rotating. Because basically it would have to rotate through every single one and that's just, that's just not feasible. 
But if there's only like the axis commands and the facing commands, we might be okay. So let me just look at a few things. Beehive would probably be one of them. Facing north. So that's the same as, whoops, as the dispenser. The chest, I think, doesn't work. Hopper has facing north. Ooh, trapdoors. Half, bottom. Oh my goodness, those trapdoors would probably have so many. It does have the facing, though. So that's something. What about fences? Oh my goodness gracious. East, north, south, waterlogged, west. <laughs> yeah, we can't reasonably cycle through every single one of those options, and we would have to make like lots and lots of special cases. Oh no. Oh my goodness. I needed some food, so I was gonna snag it from the <laughs> but I still have the the hologram pick. Oh my goodness, I just turned my shulker box into a hologram. I cannot believe that. I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do like a very limited amount of block states, like the facing and whatever, because I'm running out of time here. Um, and we could probably just use the logic that we made with this thing to trigger the switch. And it'll just like alternate through all of them maybe. Okay, so I just made a basic loop thing. And when we deselect, yeah. So it'll alternate through, and it's alternating through the facing directions right now. Um, oh wait, it's gonna get stuck, huh? Oh, <laughs> yeah, so it's it's alternating through like facing uh, facing north and everything, and it only goes back to the X, Y, Z, the, uh, what is it? The axis X, Y, Z, after it has reached, whoopsie, after it has reached north, which it will never reach because, as you can see, there's no facing in here. Um, the game just automatically removes incorrect stuff. So I'll just need to set up a loop for that, I guess. Oh, this is actually going to be even better because now it's going to independently loop through each one. So if we... No. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Look at that. Just by deselecting our special tool, it will cycle through. That is very cool. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that can happen. Because uh because we don't have a ton of time in the episode, I didn't make like a separate a separate way to like trigger it. So we're just uh we're just rolling with the delete method. <laughs> so you have to be very sure that you're selected off of the tool before you uh, do anything. Let's go check with a facing direction. Actually, we have a chest here. I'm pretty sure chests are broken. Yeah, the facing direction doesn't change and that's unique to chests. So let's go try I guess we could try with a furnace. Oh boy. Okay. Give me the outline. Oh, there it is. Oh, it works with furnaces. Oh, what? <laughs> this is why we test things, people. Okay, this kind of illustrates how this just gets really complicated really fast. So um, the furnace does not have an up state. I, uh, I programmed one in. The dispenser, however, does. So we'll actually be able to see that it will, if it would just select. <laughs> the selecting is a little finicky. So this, oh, it's on down right now. Then up, then over here, and over there. So this can rotate through all of them, um, but this one can't. So once it hits the uh, down, which is what it was trying to do, then the game removes the down information and just puts it in its default state, which is right here. So yeah, you can see there's just so many special cases. That's kind of the whole point of block states is they're just all special cases. So it's really, I wish there was some way to pull it 
but whoops. Uh, I wish I could like pull this into NBT somehow, but it just doesn't exist. So uh, yeah, probably what would be best is to just remove the up down. It's not ideal and it will make some stuff just not work. Kind of curious what happens with the trap door. <laughs> it just rotates. Yeah, like that's so useless for a trap door. It, oh, there's just so many special cases. I think what, what I'll do is, like I say, just remove the up down. Okay, so I fixed it. Um, there's no up down anymore, which is a little sad, but it also rotates in a more intuitive manner. Wait. Except it's counterclockwise. <laughs> okay, just had to fix that little bug. So now it should rotate clockwise, which is a little more intuitive. Yep, awesome. Sweet. Okay, <laughs> well, we are really out of time. And uh, it was a blast to make. And guess what? There's a data pack in the description that you can use. So. Uh, you're welcome to go try it out. Just make sure that if you want to change stuff, you have the pick named hologram in your hotbar and as your selected item. And that and then you can just shift and let go to delete. Or you can shift and deselect the item to rotate. Not super intuitive, but it's a pretty fun thing. Made it in one episode. That's uh, that's not too bad. <laughs> Make sure not to click any of your shulker boxes. <laughs> Anything you break with this pickaxe. The power you wield with this pickaxe. <laughs> anyway, that is going to do it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. It was a pretty uh, fun challenge to make. I really think that block displays are something that uh, more builders would really like access to. So I'm glad that we got this figured out. But that is going to do it for me. So I'll catch you in the next video. Later, later.